Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, previous lecture was about inertial uh, reference frames. This lecture is about non-inertial uh, frame references, obviously. Uh, now, this lecture and uh, all other lectures I'm uh, doing right now are part of the Physics 14 uh, course of uh, uh, physics which is part of the unizor.com educational website. I suggest you actually to watch this lecture from the website uh, rather than from, let's say, YouTube, because the website contains very detailed notes and uh, it will contain uh, some problems, exams, etc. Uh, the course of physics, uh, physics for teens, is just in the very beginning. Before that, there is a completed course of math for teens and then there is also uh, the civics course, U.S. Law for Teens. And it's all on this website. It's all uh, free for all, no advertisement. So please use it. Now, let's talk about non-inertial reference frame. All right, now, the first part of this lecture is about definition of what is a non-inertial frame of reference. Well, that's a very easy part. Non-inertial frame of reference is the fr is the frame of reference which is not inertial. Now we have to probably repeat what is inertial frame of reference. Well, we could say that um, in the let's say original um, uh, formulation of this, it's about um, the system of coordinates uh, where if the object does not experience any um, acting forces upon it, or the forces are balanced, either or. Actually, there is no unbalanced forces. Then it's supposed to stay, if it stays and moves with a constant velocity, if it moves, um, so basically the first, when it stays, is part of the uh, constant velocity with a velocity vector equals to zero vector. So in any case, we have this constancy of the velocity vector as the um, a, a necessary condition for the frame of reference to be um, inertial if there are no unbalanced forces acting on the object. Well, basically all these words, all this formulation is um, brought into one specific law. It's called law of inertia, which we take as an axiom, basically, for any um, inertial system. So basically, inertial system is where the law of inertia is true, um, and the law of inertia is what I was just talking about. If there are no unbalanced forces, the body will continue its movement with a constant velocity, maybe equal to zero, all relative to this inertial reference frame. And now, back to non-inertial, that's where the law of inertia is not uh, held true. So if we have some particular um, object in a um, uh, frame of reference which is not moving with constant velocity vector while there are no unbalanced forces acting upon it, then this, inertia, this system is non-inertial, basically. That's what it is. So the law of inertia, inertia is not held true in this system, at least sometimes. Now, this is my first part of this lecture, which is very easy. As I was saying, non-inertial is not inertial. Now, to feel, basically, maybe they don't exist, these non-inertial systems. Maybe every system of um, coordinates, whichever we can come up with, is inertial. Now, we started, if you remember, from the system which is related to seemingly immovable stars, and, well, basically to a certain degree of approximation we can consider the system to be inertial, because the body, if it's somewhere in space, it's moving with a constant velocity when there are no gravitational fields or no any other forces. Uh, acting upon it. And then we have proven the theorem that if there is a system of coordinates which is uniformly moving relative to some inertial system, then it's also inertial. 
and that gives us a lot of inertial system. Now, my question is, do they exist, these non-inertial systems? And here are a couple of examples. Okay, let's consider my first example is, uh, this is my inertial system, where the law of inertia is true. So if there is some kind of a body here, let's forget about Z uh, coordinate, let's consider that this body is on the XY plane. So th there is this body, and um, actually you can move on, on the X axis. And let's say this is coordinate 1. So it's 1, 0, 0, the coordinates of this particular point. Now, if there are no acting forces, unbalanced forces, and this is an inertial system, I have chosen this particular object, I put it on this particular place, no initial velocity into any direction, so it stays in this place with coordinates um, 100. Well, let's put it x, y, z. So the coordinates of this point is 100, zero, zero, independent law of time. It's always. Okay. Now let's consider a different frame of reference. Here it is. Imagine frame of reference, which is, well, initially, let's say this is U. It's not perpendicular enough. Oh, well, that's such as, it's fine. This is V and this is W. So they have the same origin, these two coordinate system. Now my W axis coincides with Z axis. Now U and V are determining the plane which is the same as XY plane, right? But now this system of coordinates U, V, W is not just standing still, it's rotating around the axis uh, W with certain angular speed W, uh, I mean, so how can we imagine it in the practical life? Well, for instance, you have a, a, a carousel. Now, if you are standing outside of the carousel, that, that's where you are. Now, I am standing on the carousel, and the carousel is rotating with certain speed. So, from my position, I'm standing still on the carousel, and I consider that the whole world is rotating around me, right? I mean, everything is relative. So, relative to me, this point, you, in this case, as an observer, relative to me, which is standing on the carousel itself, you are rotating. So, what is, if my um, um, angular speed is uh, um, omega, and let's say it's counterclockwise, now what happens with um, this particular point? Well, this point, from the perspective of UW coordinates, is rotating uh, clockwise. Now the coordinate system goes out counterclockwise, so the point relative to the system will be uh, clockwise. And how it will be rotating, basically? Well, if this is the angular speed, it means that at time t it will turn by the angle, and if this is the radius equals to 1, so my um, my coordinates, my u coordinate will be one, which is the radius times cosine omega t, and uh, v will be uh, also one, the radius times sine of omega t. So this is my movement. Well, first of all, the point is not standing still, as in the x, y, z coordinate, where it's just standing still. 
time doesn't really change the coordinates. In this case, time changes coordinates because it goes in a circle. Not only that, it's a circular movement. Circular movement is not a straight line movement, so it's not like a movement with a constant velocity, which means our law of inertia is not uh, holding true in this particular case. We have an object which experiences no acting upon its forces, and yet in this UVW coordinate system, it's going in a circle. That's the contradiction to the law of inertia, which means law of inertia is not held true to this in this particular uh, frame of reference, which means this frame of reference is not inertial or non-inertial. Being not inertial means it's non-inertial. Okay, that's my first example. Just for you to feel that there are non-inertial systems. Now, let's consider a little bit more practical case. We all live on the planet Earth, and we are assuming that, well, we can conduct certain experiment, and we are thinking that, well, if I will just, you know, push, let's say, a scooter or something once uh, in a straight line, it will go in a straight line as if it is because of the law of inertia. Well, that's true, but it's not exactly true because the Earth is really uh, rotating around its axis, similar, similar to this, which means that the system of coordinates, which is um, um, connected with, with, with the surface of the Earth, is not exactly inertial system. And maybe the law of inertia is not working. Well, the answer is, no, it's not working, that's absolutely true. However, considering that the Earth is so big and um, the, uh, uh, basically the radius is very big and we are talking about a very small uh, distance during which we are observing this particular thing. Small in, in, in a distance and small in time as well. So these parameters actually are um, contributing to our impression that if we have a system of coordinate um, related to one particular point on, on the planet Earth, then it's basically inertial. It's not, but the deviation from being inertial is really very, very small, because the Earth is so big and the radius of, uh, uh, of rotation is very big. And similarly, if you have this particular radius and you take a particular piece of this you really see the curvature but if the radius is something like this and you have a similar piece of radio uh, similar piece of circumference it's much more resembling the straight line than this one because the curvature in this case is greater and in this case is less so the curvature of earth is very small on the surface and, and, and the rotation is one rotation in, in 24 hours. That's also quite a long period of time relative to our experiment, which takes probably like 20 seconds, right? Well, not only that, the Earth is actually going around the Sun with a much bigger speed. It's like, I don't remember exactly the number, something like 27 kilometers per second or whatever it is. I mean, it's just huge. So, again, considering this speed, but considering the radius it rotates around the Sun, all these um, uh, characteristics of the movement of the Earth contribute to our impression that it's almost inertial. But, again, in theory, there are no inertial systems, because everything is rotating around something in God knows what fashion. But, again, to a certain approximation, we can, in, uh, we can actually assume that certain systems, like the system which is related to stars, are inertial. Now, let me talk about another example. So, the rotation gif definitely gives you um, a non-inertial system. What else? Again, just as an example, I'm not going to talk about all the possible non-inertial systems, just two examples. 
Okay, so we start with the same inertial system. And a point P with coordinates 1, 0, 0. Now, my um, system, which I will prove to be non inertial, initially at moment t equals to 0, my UVW system is exactly the same as XYZ, which means this is U, this is V, and this is W. Axes are exactly the same, and origin is exactly the same. But then, at moment t star equals to zero, my UVW system starts moving. Moving to the right along the x-axis. So the next position would be something like this. This would be V and this would be W. So it moves this way. Now what happens with um, my coordinates? Well, if this piece on which I moved is equal to A. My coordinate in the new system will be only this piece, which is 1 minus A, right? And then 0, 0. But if my movement is accelerating, so the distance in moment uh, in, in the time t, the distance will be, let's say, a t squared or something like this. That's, if you remember, um, how the distance looks uh, in case you're accelerating. Well, to be exact, if a is acceleration, the distance as a moment, at moment t is this one, right? If we start with zero location and zero initial speed that was in the previous lectures. So what does it mean? It means that my position uh, in the UVW system would be UVW of t. It will be 1 minus a t square over 2. Which means it also will be accelerating. So as my system of um, uh, system of coordinates goes to the right with acceleration A, coordinate of the point P would be moving to the left with acceleration A. Well, it is acceleration A because the first derivative of this is minus uh, 2 A T divided by 2 which is minus A T and my second uh, uh, my second uh, uh, derivative, which is, so this is V of T, and the A of T is equal to uh, minus A. Minus because it goes to the left relative to the coordinate system. If coordinate system goes to the right, the coordinate of this point goes to the left, obviously. That's why it's minus. So the second derivative is not equal to zero, which means my point from the position of the UVW system goes to the left, to the negative direction, accelerating, which is again against the law of inertia, which says that if there are no forces, the velocity must be constant, and that's why no acceleration. So this is another. So any system which accelerates in some way relative to inertial system is non-inertial. And in the previous example, any system which rotates in some way relative to inertial system is not inertial itself. So these are two examples. Now, let me just prove, well, it's kind of similar to whatever I was just talking about, but in more kind of formula type way. Let me prove that if um, you have two systems, XYZ is inertial system, and the position of the point is either constant or its uh, um, uh, movement with uh, constant velocity vector. 
Now, if my another system, my UVW system, such that such that it moves relative to this system in such a way that the axes are parallel, correspondingly parallel, always. So it's like this would be my one system and this would be my another system. And the movement is this. So if XYZ system is inertial and UVW system is moving parallel to XYZ with axis, axis parallel to XYZ but the origin is moving somewhere. So my point is that if this movement is not uh, with a constant velocity then this system is not is non-inertial. So this is the vector Q in XYZ system characterizes the location of the origin. So all we need is this function Q which specifies location of the UVW system this point in XYZ coordinates. If this is not a constant velocity vector, I mean if the first derivative is not constant basically. Now this is vector by the way, I didn't specify it. These are vectors. Position is a vector. So if my position of, of uh, of the code of the origin of coordinate of the UV of, of the UVW in XYZ coordinates. If it's not a constant um, velocity um, vector, then this system is non-inertial. How can I prove it? Very simply. Let's take uh, any point. So its location is in XYZ system this one. And I know that the first derivative of this is, in the absence of forces and considering this is an inertial system, the first derivative is a constant vector, right? Now let's talk about different implementation of this. If I will take this vector. Now this vector is coordinate of this point in UVW system. So this is P U V uh, W of t. And this would be p x y z of t. So we have a vector from origin of x y z to this point. The vector from origin of x y z to origin of uh, u v w and from the origin of u v w to the point. Now obviously this vector is equal to this plus this. So from here to here, this is this vector, it's the same as from here to here, which is this, plus from here to here, which is this. Now, this is a um, uh, vector of position which has a constant velocity. So if we will take the first derivative, we will have v x, y, z of t, which is constant equals to v u v w plus q prime that's the speed of movement of the origin of the uh, uvw system in xyz coordinates now if this is the constant because my body is not experiencing any acting force and these are ve velocity uh, vector in the XYZ initial, uh, inertial system of coordinates. If this is not a constant, then this is not a constant. And since this is not constant, it means that UVW uh, is not an inertial system. So it's non-inertial, basically. So this is the way how we can prove certain things which means that we have an in infinitely num in infinite number of inertial system and infinite number of non-inertial system. We just have to be very careful. Well, 
considering my infinite number of inertial system is basically infinite number of systems which are almost inertial we were talking about basically not having inertial system at all in a pure 100 percent mathematical uh, sense but in a certain approximation we know that there are many systems which can be considered inertial in our experiments in our theoretical uh, manipulation etc but many systems that are obviously non-inertial significantly non-inertial so there are inertial systems which are actually non-inertial non-inertial but in an insignificant sense they're almost inertial and then there are really non-inertial systems who are which manifest their non-inertiality very obviously okay so inertial and non-inertial systems are very important and most likely we will try to to deal with anything whatever we are dealing with using inertial systems now whenever we are I know dropping the uh, the stone from the top of the Tower of Pisa we are thinking that Tower of Pisa represents uh, inertial system and then we can basically calculate how the stone will fall etc whenever we are launching a projectile from uh, uh, from some place on the surface of the earth we are considering that the surface of the earth actually is the basis for some inertial system and relative to this system we are calculating how our um, projectile is moving etc um, so um, you just have to understand that there are non-inertial systems and most likely we will try to avoid them that's basically my kind of final note in this particular lecture um, uh, why don't you read exactly the notes for this this lecture on unizor.com um, I, I was trying to write the notes as, as as a textbook basically so now you have the advantage of, of, of hearing whatever it is and also reading and sometimes they might actually contribute to each other these two sources of information all right that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>